Hi there, everyone. Uh, thanks very much for listening in to the next of these uh, YouTube videos. I really appreciate the fact that you've been watching these in big numbers on YouTube and through MS Teams. I really appreciate that. And this one is so important because I'm going to be addressing the issue of the potential return to college in June. Uh, I want to give you as much information as I can at the moment about that. Um, it's really important that not only you understand this, uh, obviously you're watching this, well done, thank you, but if you know of somebody who hasn't uh, seen this yet, can you please just alert them, send them a message, say they've got to watch it. But also on this occasion, I would ask you to um, invite your parents um, and any other people in your household who, uh, with whom you're talking about safety and uh, the prospect of going back to uh, college, um, please share this video with them and they can perhaps watch it and understand what we're doing at Monarchs to make sure that we can provide you with a safe environment at the point at which you come back to college. You know, you'll hear a huge amount. I'm sure you have been hearing a huge amount in the media and on the news about the uh, the prospect of schools reopening in some form from the, from the 1st of June. Um, I, I stress from the 1st of June, not necessarily on the 1st of June. Uh, and there's, you know, there's, great, there's great public debate about uh, uh, how that will play out on public transport and uh, the availability of uh, testing, etc. But two things about that. Uh, we're making plans based on the assumption um, that the government says that uh, there is a very, very low risk of infection um, for, um, for, for students um, and staff and people who work at the college. Um, if we were to reopen, provided that um, we have adhered to the best possible advice on social distancing, on hygiene, on cleanliness and on safety. Um, and so s the other point on that to bear in mind is that, is that it, regardless of what you hear in the media, it's down to us as Monarchs College to decide exactly what we need to do because we know our campus we know our students, we know the situation of our staff also. So it's very much for us to interpret. So the things I'm going to talk to you about are unique to, to Monarchs College. Um, and so please pay attention to everything that I've got to say here. And as usual, there'll also be a transcript version of this um, broadcast um, that will be available very, very shortly. And we'll make sure that's sent to you if you prefer, if you prefer to read. Um, but uh, for those of you who are, who are watching this, yeah, great. I've come out into my garden. Um, sorry about any ambient noise. I've come out to get some, some fresh air and uh, just relax and be able to get my thoughts in order for you. OK, so here goes. There are two sides to this. One, I'm going to talk to you about uh, everything that we're doing generally at college to re reconfigure the college so that we can guarantee social distancing. Um, and um, so I'm going to talk to you about how we've organised buildings, how we'll organise um, arrival of students, exit of students, etc. Um, and then secondly, I'm going to talk to you more specifically about um, what you might do when you come into college. You know, how often might you come in um, un and to do what, for what purpose, and how might that be arranged, etc. So first of all, college logistics and secondly um, you as students how you might um, start having face-to-face -face contact with the college once again um, and I think it's also worth saying before we get into the detail that the big objective here is to try and build up the confidence of each and every one of us to be able to leave the house um, and to start uh, interacting with other people at a safe distance um, to get back into the learning environment um, and to know how to do that uh, with respectful behaviours um, and with a degree of alertness um, and to build up not just confidence but also um, our knowledge of how the world will work um, in a, in, in a, in a post-COVID-19 um, post situation because I don't think that the issues that we're facing now in the month of June or end of May, early June, I uh, don't think those issues are going to suddenly evaporate um, we are going to continue to have some form of social distancing right the way into the next um, academic year. Um, I'm sure you appreciate these things. Um, so uh, bear in mind that online learning has been a phenomenal success. I mean, you've attended well. Um, in some areas, the attendance has been absolutely incredible. 
um, and I know that the progress that you're making through the curriculum has been very, very strong. Uh, the objective here is is to switch the emphasis across to having face-to-face um, -face contact with people um, and um, to blend that with some form of ongoing um, independent study and remote learning. Um, okay, so we know that all colleges have been asked to prepare to increase the number of students who attend college from the 1st of June. Um, we won't be having students on site on the 1st of June. Um, it may well be on the 3rd of June at the earliest because we need to give our staff the opportunity to come in first, check their workspaces that we have reorganised for them, um, check they're happy um, and then start sending out invitations for students to come in uh, and I'll talk about that in a minute. But in terms of the way we've organised the college and what we're doing this week, um, we are putting across the college uh, all of the queuing systems that you would expect, um, adhering to the two metre distancing uh, rules that we, we are all following. Um, so even when you come into college, you won't be able to crowd into the college in groups if it happens that several students have arrived at one time. Uh, there will be a queuing system outside the college and on entry. You'll be required to use hand sanitizer. Um, and we'll also be making sure that you're not entering the college with any symptoms that you're aware of, of illness. Um, but you can do that piece at home. You wouldn't come into college if you had any kind of symptom what, whatsoever. Um, and around the college also, you can expect to see safe distancing markers in corridors and also in those areas of the college where um, we provide a service. So for example, there will be a queuing system at the reception area. There'll be a queuing system to enter the LRC. Uh, and to buy food, whether that's at um, the uh, cafe or whether that's at the canteen, there will be a queuing system. Um, and we will clearly need to manage the number of uh, students who are uh, accessing those areas. But in everything that I'm saying, I want you to imagine that there might typically be uh, maybe 25% of the number of students who you might normally have at the busiest time of the year, you might normally have seen um, on campus at any one time. So numbers are going to be reduced and those who are on site are going to keep their distance from one another. Um, we won't be using some spaces in the usual way. So for example, the zone is a large space that will be actually given over as office space so that we can reduce the number of staff who are working in any single office. Um, students might go into the zone because the personal mentors are likely to be working in there and you may go in if you have a one-to-one -one appointment um, with a personal mentor. Rooms 13, 14, for those of you that use those rooms, are likely to be out of commission for the month of June because we may need to use those for office space. Um, corridors will be carefully managed, um, so we won't be having students uh, bunching up outside a room waiting to, to go in. First of all, there won't be many students attending in any one session as I'll describe later, uh, but also we're likely to give students access to the room so they're not having to block corridors. Um, and we will have in where it's where it's possible to do so, for example, in the main block, there will be a one way system in in corridors. So we'll, we'll significantly reduce the number of people who are flowing through corridors and um, try to remove any instance of people waiting around in corridors. It won't be necessary to wait around with the exception of a small number of rooms uh, where we can't give students um, access without a teacher for health and safety reasons, for example, a science lab. Uh, but other arrangements will, will, will take the place there. Um, some of the usual practices that we have in the college, such as uh, providing first aid, will be uh, reduced. Um, there'll be a limit to, to, to our ability to, to offer first aid, but we will still be able to continue to look after students um, who... Um, let's hope it doesn't happen but if they had an accident we'll be able to help students uh, but we will be reducing um, we'll be reducing the proximity that we can have with students for first aid purposes staff who do come into contact with students for those slightly more personal reasons will be wearing PPE uh, the college has a good supply of masks and gloves um, and sanitation um, so uh, I'm not saying that first aid is is not possible, but it may well, may well be a, a reduced service for, for students. We'll also, connected to that, we will have for any students who fall ill if they, whilst they were on site. I don't think this is going to happen because I think that people will be able to uh, manage their, their, their 
um, manage themselves and not come into college if they were experiencing any symptoms, um, uh, just not come into college in those circumstances. But we will have an isolation room for anyone who falls ill during the college day. Um, and we'll be able to, in a sense, triage people and uh, most typically make sure they get home quickly um, and uh, stay at home. And if we did have any instances of um, students being um, unwell um, or anyone at all being unwell in a particular area of the college, um, that would be followed by um, you know, management of that situation, including deep clean of the space um, and advice to those people who may have come into close contact with somebody to be staying at home um, for a period of time. Um, now, a lot of what I'm talking about will also be followed up next week with a sort of practical common sense guidance, um, how to conduct yourself, how to behave at college in order that you can look after your own safety, but also the safety of others. But um, that sort of practical detail um, in terms of how to be at college will come next week. Um, some services such as um, reception services will be delivered partially online, so there'll be an MS Teams version of reception so that we don't have people queuing unnecessarily to ask a question which they could ask um, online. Um, generally speaking, there will be no visitors to, to college. We won't be inviting in, for example, parents for, for parents' meetings um, during the month of June. Uh, it won't be possible to um, to have Friday sorry Friday prayers taking place at college for a period of time. Um, I think students affected by that will be already familiar with uh, the, the reasons why. Um, and also we'll have restrictions on the use of the prayer room, um, limits on the number of people who can access that space. The cleaning regime that we brought in in March, the enhanced regime of uh, frequently cleaning toilets and uh, door handles and railings, etc., that will that will continue. Um, and I think crucial to our plans is this: that um, we are significantly reducing the number of students who um, not only come on site, but the number of students who use any one classroom in a, in a day. Um, that and that will that will enable us to have um, a, a significant reduction in the likelihood of um, spread of any infection. Um, we will also control students not only on entry but also on exit. So we will manage students leaving the college so that uh, we do not have crowding unnecessarily at buses or a situation where a bus is worried about stopping because there are too many people seeking to get access to that bus. Uh, but I don't think this will be a, a huge issue because we won't have many students on site um, of an afternoon or at any particular point. And also we will have a staggered um, start and finish time to uh, sessions that are running. Um, we will use outdoor spaces as well as classrooms and some outdoor spaces will be configured so that some uh, workshops, etc. Et can take place outdoors. Uh, and now I'm going to turn my attention to the second part of this, which is uh, to describe to you uh, how and when you might come into college um, and what does face to face contact actually entail and how frequently might you be coming into college. So I've already explained that um, it wouldn't be on the 1st of June, but perhaps during that week after half term, some students may start to get invitations from students uh, from, from staff, sorry, um, to to come in. Because we, we have um, carefully calculated that um, for every single classroom, you know, what is the maximum number of people that could be in that space and observe uh, two metre social distancing? Um, and typically for the classrooms on our campus, um, that would be nine people, maybe up to 12 is the maximum, but typically nine people could be in a classroom and sometimes it's as low as six. Um, could be in a classroom at any one time, and that includes obviously the teacher. Um, so what will happen is that each teacher will have their own room um, and they will invite um, a number of students in for a session. So for example, if, you, if a teacher has a session with a group of students normally, period two on a Tuesday, then that, but normally there are maybe 20 students in the class, that teacher will invite in um, maybe six, seven, eight students for a workshop. You know, other students will not be at college, will not be invited to come into college and will continue working, working independently at home. Um, and um, 
students will be invited to come in for a face-to-face -face workshop with a member of staff. They may also be invited in um, for other reasons, such as to talk to a personal mentor or a progress coach. Um, and uh, but, but by and large, we're putting across to teachers uh, the, the control of numbers by saying that um, in, 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 a, in a given room in which they are working, there is a maximum number of people who could be invited into the space at any one time, and teachers will manage the invitations accordingly. Um, and during the week, they will see different groups of students. I can't guarantee that um, all students in a group would be invited in for a workshop um, once a week. Um, that it may well be um, slightly less regular than that, um, but I would say uh, that that typically is going to be possible for students to to come in um, to see a teacher on one occasion per week. Um, and uh, I would say to you also that you won't be able to come into college if you're not invited, but if you are uh, invited in for a workshop, um, you will be able to stay on site and um, make use of the LRC if you need to do so. Um, and you may not want to do that. You may want to just head off um, home straight away. Um, teachers won't only use their time for um, invitational workshops. Um, they will also continue on occasions to run um, remote online teaching and learning sessions for the whole group. Um, so teachers will blend uh, the practice of meeting small groups of students face to face by invitation with um, the idea of uh, what you're experiencing at the moment, which is um, online teaching. Um, but it will mean that what we can do is gradually build up um, students' confidence about coming in and understanding about how we want to do things at Monarchs um, in, 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 with appropriate uh, social distancing. Um, and I would also say that if you're in a BTEC group, it's quite likely that you won't be having face-to-face -face contact with all of your teachers, but maybe for each um, BTEC or vocational group, um, it may well be just one teacher who's um, managing the face-to-face -face contact with that group of students. Um, the term will continue uh, as, as planned through to, to, to the end of... Um, to, to the end of term, but we may well extend by a further week, for example, for um, A-level students who may continue inviting them in for workshops um, simply on the basis of the huge amount of content that those students need to uh, cover and the uh, level of guidance required um, for those students, but that's not yet confirmed. Um, teachers will log who centrally who, who they've invited in, so we'll be able to keep a record of the number of students who are being invited in on, on into college at any, any one time. Um, and I would say to you that mm, that's probably enough detail for now, um, but I want to recap. I, I want to explain to you that we've worked very, very hard to, uh, first and foremost, um, have a system whereby we are we can be sure that we will not have on site more students than can be safely accommodated at a two meter distance in in any um, in any one um, space, um, primarily classrooms. Um, so that was our starting point. And secondly, we've passed across to our teachers the uh, responsibility for. Um, for deciding what what is what is the best use of workshop time, how might that happen? What do students need? Um, and there's flexibility there for teachers to invite different groups of students in at any given time, um, based on perhaps a similar need, or based on a priority basis. Um, and so there's a lot of flexibility, and teachers will approach things in different ways. But for you as students. I want you to understand that coming into college will be a safe experience. The environment that we provide will be um, will have been carefully risk assessed um, and um, that we will be looking forward to welcoming you in. But uh, we will at the same time need to make sure that people are quite disciplined uh, when they're on site. Um, so do expect us to be uh, engineering this quite tightly. Um, and making sure that people know what the rules of the game are. Um, but uh, nevertheless, it will be a fantastic day when we start to see students coming back into college again. It will be uh, you know, a glimmer of hope that we'll be soon back to something that we can call uh, normality. Um, although I do think that uh, what happens in June will continue to an extent 
in September. Um, I think there'll be a gradual easing of social distancing rules and regulations, uh, but I think it's going to be our responsibility as um, citizens in this country to look out for one another. Um, and so this will be a learning experience in the, in the month of June. Um, I would also say that for any student who has good reason to not come into college because they are needing to self-isolate or on the basis of uh, their family situation or other people in their household, it's not a question of being under pressure to um, accept an invitation to come in. If you, have good, if you have good reason not to come in, you won't come in. Um, and we will respect that and, and that won't, won't, we, won't be a problem. But we're conscious also that um, actually this, this kind of interaction would by and large be a good experience for, for people. So those who are, are able to leave the house um, will be very welcome. Um, and um, I think that will be a positive step forward for us. But I don't want anyone to feel that we're putting undue pressure on families um, and somehow requiring you to come in if there's a good reason why you shouldn't be coming in. Please understand that. Um, with those final words, I'll say um, goodbye for now. Um, I see the clock ticking over 21 minutes here, uh, a lot to cover, and um, um, thank you very much for reaching the end of the, uh, of the YouTube video. So thank you and stay safe, everyone, and hopefully see you soon. Bye-bye.